Just relax. You're safe. want you to go where I've been, or see the things I've seen. I know I've let you down. Maybe we can be together again. But for now, I'm sorry. Washington Irving wrote, there is a sacredness in tears. They are not the mark of weakness, but of power. They speak more eloquently than 10,000 tongues. They are the messengers of overwhelming grief. Today our tears are for Emily. We mourn a young life ended far too soon. We mourn the things we never said could have said, because we never had the chance to say goodbye. months. Just go so quick, you know. I know. Do you think she blames us? Maybe. Thank you both for coming today. I'm sure it meant so much to Emily. She meant so much to us. Yeah. Christina, I was wondering if you could do something for me. Of course. The pendant Emily wore, it was one my mother gave to me. I wanted to be sure it was safe. I can't face going back there. Of course. I was just wondering. I will get it. Don't worry.
18th of May. Now that the clinic is closing, I'm going to have to see one of the counsellors privately. Her name is Dominique. She sees people at home in the town. I'm glad to leave. There's something quite dark about this place, and I just feel pity for some of the people I've met. The school said I can take as much time as I need to recover from this, but I don't believe them. I can't afford to lose that job. I'm pretending that I'm better than I am. I just can't shake off that feeling of shadows following me. I feel in danger, as though my life's going to end. I tell people that I'm okay, but when I close my eyes, all I see is black clouds around me. I just feel so empty inside. How much longer will I have to wear this mask? First of May. I'm so scared. I found out something about the girl who went missing from the clinic. I don't want to believe it. I can't write it down. Dominique what I knew. She tried to calm me down. She says it's all in my head, but I know this is real. Don't tell me you're going tomorrow. I can't stick around here. I need to get back. Come on, I haven't seen you for ages. I don't know. I'll just stay for the weekend. We should sort things out. I just want us to remember Emily together.
there? Why don't we start with why you're here? My friend Emily died recently. Yes, I heard about that. I'm sorry you've had to have that experience. It must be very troubling for you. She mentioned you in a journal that she kept? I'm sure she did. I encouraged her to keep a diary of her treatment. Please, I really need some answers. Maybe it would be better if we talk about your feelings about this. You could tell me what's troubling you. Close your eyes and listen carefully to my voice. you to go to your deeper place, way down inside of you. Think of your calm, safe place. Go there in your mind. Now. Oh, come on, Christina, you need to trust me more. Good, Christina. As you go deeper into the woods, the deeper you go into yourself. I look in the mirror and I just and I hate myself. I feel so stupid. <laughs> What 
What has scared you recently? I saw a ghost. Do you believe in ghosts? I never used to. But now I'm not sure. It's all right not to be sure. They are, after all, just a figment of our imaginations. Representations of our anxieties and guilt. Then why would I see one? Our minds see what they want us to see. Do you believe in the afterlife? Yes. Do you believe in carrying on when everything else looks hopeless? I'm not sure. Tell me about your relationship with your parents. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get that. It's a prearranged call from one of my clients. Please, wait here. I shouldn't be long. La dernière fois que vous êtes venu, vous avez bien vu, il faut rester calme et vous verrez la prochaine fois, nous en reparlerons. Voilà, et vous verrez, ça sera, ça sera beaucoup mieux pour vous. Hein. Ah non, surtout pas, ne faites pas ça. Voilà, et je vous verrai, oui. Peut-être plus tard après, oui.
I'm sorry, I was just trying to find a bathroom. Of course. I should have shown you where it was. What was I thinking? Thank you. Thank you for your help. Not at all. You're an interesting girl, Christina. I hope you find the answers you're looking for. Do speak to Reverend Peter at the church. I'm sure he can help you with this. I understand that, of course. But can you explain to me why you think a dead person is talking to you? It doesn't talk to me. Uh, she puts thoughts in my mind. How is this affecting you? Uh, I feel her here every day, um, especially at night. As though I'm always being watched. What she used to say was comforting. Um, but now it's things that frighten me. I'm concerned that this imaginary friend is affecting your emotions so much. Imaginary? She is as real as you are! Please. Talking to me, Emily. It's important you explain this. I can't. Why not? <laughs> because he's right there, standing behind you. <laughs> Reverend Peter. Peter, please. It's Christina, isn't it? How can I be of help? There are a few things I wanted to ask you. Well, after a bereavement, people often want answers. It's about Emily. I just wanted to better understand what happened. Friends and family have all sorts of feelings after an event like this. Uh, uh, guilt is, is very common. Emily talked about seeing ghosts here in the village. And it's something that I've experienced as well. It's very common after a death like this to have such experiences. Even for those that don't believe in the paranormal. I thought that too, but this is something different. Maybe it has something to do with the story of Agnes. Agnes? It's a local legend. 
dates back to the 18th century. She was a maid who worked in the Lord's estate. Her parents brought her over from Sweden when they came to work here. The story goes that she had an affair with the Lord. When she fell pregnant, he was, he was horrified that she wanted to legitimize the relationship. It was all very different back then, of course. So what did she do? Well, when she refused to back down, he threw her out. It was very cruel. Her parents went around for her, and, and as a single pregnant woman back then, your, your choices were, were very limited. Out of options and without any hope, she threw herself into the lake on the Lord's estate, drowned herself and the unborn child. And that's where the ghost stories come from. Thanks, Anne. Bye. Not exactly. It's said that she cursed the area with her death and that her spirit returns to taunt young women into taking their own lives. <laughs> it's all nonsense, of course. But there are more suicides here than normal. Some areas are more prone to this than others. The sad fact is suicide hotspots occur more often than you'd think. And having a local legend like this only adds to the problem and plays into people's neuroses. Doesn't help that Alexander keeps talking about it. He's the Lord's descendant. He lives here in the village? Yes. The estate's had the same family and for hundreds of years. I wouldn't recommend talking to him about this. It's not the kind of thing you want to hear when you've just lost a friend in the way that you have. Can be a little bit grumpy too. Hello, Alexander? Yes, what do you want? I believe I met a colleague of yours today, Dominique. She mentioned to me that you worked at the clinic. I was hoping I could ask you some questions. Very well, come in. Thank you. This is my friend Emily. She passed away recently. Yes. I was at the clinic when your friend was there. But purely in an advisory capacity, I uh, couldn't comment on her treatment. Why did the clinic close? No. A series of patient disappearances. Suicides. Over the years, it led to its closure. And anything else? There was nothing wrong with the treatment there. It was the building that was cursed. So you believe there's some truth in this curse? Oh, yes. This house has been under dark clouds for hundreds of years. Ever since my ancestor foolishly impregnated that stupid maid. Have you seen her? Of course. She haunted this house for years, burning the life out of anybody who lived under its roof. Yeah, the good reverend hasn't told you the full story, has he? My ancestor was an arrogant man. He was also stupid. A man in his position should never have gone near one of his domestic staff. I mean, a maid, for goodness sake. 
I suppose her being Swedish must have added an air of exoticism. Of course, the inevitable happened. Usually these things are handled discreetly, but for some reason she thought he would acknowledge her as the father of her child. A preposterous idea back then. She had to leave, of course. The other staff turned their backs on her. Nobody in the village would help. <laughs> Quite alone, with no family to turn to, she was left with almost no choice. They say that a soul that dies in a state of rage leaves a curse. Well, Agnes cursed us all that day. So people believe these deaths were because of her? Records in this house were very carefully kept. Particularly so on an estate so heavily reliant on agriculture. The phases of the moon were noted. Agnes's death was remarked on at the time because of the blood moon that appeared in the sky on the night of her death. A lunar eclipse. Indeed. Two years on and Agnes was barely remembered until the next blood moon appeared in the sky. That night, a maid in the house swore she'd seen Agnes on the stairs, whispering to her. The days went on, and she became more and more hysterical, claiming she heard Agnes speaking to her wherever she went. Next morning, the estate steward found the maid hanging from a tree. After that, we grew to fear the appearance of a blood moon. Even now? Let me show you something. Out there used to be the outbuildings that the servants lived in. What happened? I had it burned to the ground. 
When one of the servants started complaining about a woman who would be seen in the building at night, I'd finally had enough. Did she ever come back? <laughs> I had the grounds of the house lined with salt. She never returned. But has she been seen in the village? Oh, yes. By the lake where she died. I really don't recommend you go there. I just want to know if she had anything to do with what happened to my friend. Look, I hope you find your answers. But if I were you, I'd leave this accursed place. Hello? Anybody here?
Oh, oi! What's your me? game? You shouldn't be here. This is a close sight. There was someone in there. They were following me. Oh, there's always weirdos hanging about this place. It's bloody dangerous. <laughs> no, this is something different. There was someone behind me. I, I swear, I swear. Well, we aren't there now. And what did you think you were doing, wandering about like that? My friend was a patient here. I just wanted to see it for myself. I don't think so. Well, this place has been closed more than 20 years. No, she was here two years ago. This place was closed up after the fire broke out on the ward. They moved all the mental stuff to some other place. Hello again. I'm just on my way to visit someone. Is it urgent? I just wanted to know if you recognise this person. Yeah, I know who that is. Uh, why'd you ask? I think she had something to do with why Emily died. Her name's Lucy. She disappeared three years ago. Do you know why? Apparently she started saying that she was visited by a woman called Agnes, who started talking to her at night. First I just thought it was hysteria, mental illness manifesting itself in hallucinations. And do you still believe that now? I was called away on parish business for two days. When I returned, I was told that she walked out of the house in the night and disappeared. It's, it's troubled me ever since. Could you tell me where he lives? If you must speak to him, be careful. He's quite delicate. He lives on his own. Hello, Matthew. It is. And what can I do for you? Um, we were wondering if we could talk to you about your daughter. Oh. Well, I suppose you'd better come in then. Our friend recently passed away. And we felt that it might have something to do with what happened to your daughter. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear about your friend, but I can't see what it would have to do with Lucy. Our friend Emily had an interest in what happened to your daughter. She had a photo of her. <laughs> Why would she be interested in someone who ran away from home? Well, we don't know, but we were hoping that you could maybe help us. Well, I can certainly try. Did she talk about anything strange before she ran away? Look, I don't see why I need to talk about this. If you haven't heard from her in this long, do you not think that something else might have happened? No. She's somewhere. Look, I don't know where, and for whatever reason, she doesn't want to talk to me yet. But I'm sure she'll call soon enough. Look, in my heart, I know she's fine. Have you never thought that Maybe she's not coming back. Oh. Wasn't that bloody vicar? She is coming back. 
She's fine. I don't think that's what she meant. Look, I want both of you out of my house now. That could have gone better. Go on, say it. What, that sometimes it's better to let me do the talking? <laughs> Don't you think he was a bit of a creep? The way he was looking at us. Yeah, you managed to get a lonely guy to chuck two women out of his house. <laughs> Quite an achievement. Shut up. Besides, I've got an idea. Hi. Sorry, I thought I should come and apologise for my friend's behaviour. Do you mind if I come back in? All right. Come on, then. Yes, look, I'm sorry I probably overreacted, but uh, yeah, it's been a terrible time for me. Uh, I mean, if you can imagine, uh, I, I, I have to say my wife has probably made things worse. She's constantly at me for, for support, uh, financial, I mean, uh, and I just don't have it anymore, and I don't know what to do. Anyway, that was how it... What was that noise? Did you not hear that? Look, I know you're up there. Well, you can get yourself down here and get out. I can't believe we just did that. I hope you found something. I think I did. I thought we were never going to get out of there. Did you smell the drink on him? Hello. Poor guy. Do you think this is the lake she was talking about? 
Well, that's the only one in Alexander's estate, so it must be the one she drowned herself in. So is this where she's supposed to have drowned? I guess. How can you kill yourself and your child? Do you think we should be doing this? I just want to know what Emily was thinking. Why she would do it. Do you remember what she said in her note? About what? Don't follow me where I'm going. I know. What if she meant this? I'm gonna take a look around, see if I can find that orchard that Lucy mentioned in her diary. It's got to be near here somewhere. I'm not going anywhere. Charlotte, come on. There's a pathway through the trees. Maybe it's the clinic Emily went to. Ugh, gives me the creeps. Let's not stay here too long. Wait. I think we're here.
What are you looking for? I don't really know. Maybe that's look around the back. Maybe this is a way in. You think this is a good idea? Hold this. I don't think we should be doing this. Charlotte, she's here. Charlotte? 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 Is that even possible? Charlotte? 
Charlotte, Charlotte, if you're there, bloody come out! Charlotte, please come out. Who are you?
I believe we're making progress here. This is as close as we've come in any of our sessions so far, but we still have a way to go. It felt so clear. The sedatives will do that, but it also shows that we are getting closer. Think about it carefully, Christina. I know your thoughts will be very confused by the drugs that they gave you, but it is important that you remember. Why did I see ghosts? Well, ghosts can often represent unresolved feelings. In your case, guilt over Charlotte, pursuing you in a different form. And why did I see you? Evidently you see me as a weak opponent, unable to overcome your feelings about this. <laughs> I must say I'm a little disappointed of your lack of faith in me, but I have come to expect a certain level of antagonism from anybody who comes into this room especially someone with such troubling feelings to recall. Now, shall we try again? Just settle. Compose your thoughts. Listen to my voice. When I count down to one, you will be back in the deep recesses of your mind where all your thoughts will be clear. Three, two, one. Marriage consists of entrusting ourselves into the deepest care of another. It is a Dr. sacred Moran trust. Insight. Today is no. also an opportunity for us to not only share wish it was you. in the joy of Emily 
and Sam's love, but to also remember and appreciate the joy, love and friendship that we experience in our own lives. But more importantly, it is a journey that they will take together. I'm wondering why you want to go with rock blast. Why could we be worth going in this one this time? Besides, I'm feeling a bit weird. I think I'm going to go home. Come on, I've been so bored. Nothing interesting seems to happen to me anymore. Let's just go and get a drink. Okay, but if it's rubbish, I'm blaming you. Are you sure about this? Yes. yes. What, what could possibly go wrong? Go wrong. <laughs> Where did you say we were going again? We're nearly there. Only a few more minutes.
Looks like she got more fight in her. Can't take both. Well, we're going to take one of you with us, so who's it going to be? Yeah, fuck you, we're not going anywhere. It has to be one of you. You have to get us out of this. That one. That's not really how it happened, is it, Christina? Thank <laughs> you. 
three, two, one. <laughs> Christina, you're back. It's all right, Christina, you're quite safe. No, I couldn't have, I couldn't have left her. What else could you have done? I should have stopped it. I should have gone up the stairs. She must have known. Do you really think that in her last moment she expected you to come and save her? She must have been resigned to her fate, accepting of it even. I don't know what she would have thought. No, but you knew her. Do you really think she would want you to carry around all this all your life? You've done so well today. This is a real breakthrough. It's taken us days to get this far. You should be feeling very proud of yourself. I just can't believe she's really... Dead? Well, it's the body, Christina, not the life. because you think of yourself first. Maybe it's just because you get scared. I don't know. I wouldn't say you're selfish, as I know that underneath you do care about your friends. But sometimes you just, you don't always let it show. forward to seeing you soon. 